So, hello. Uh, I just wanted to talk briefly about the low A extension or the low A bell, as we sometimes have to use in the orchestra. Uh, for example, in pieces such as Siegfried by Wagner, as you can see here. Um, the thing is, uh, on the bassoon, uh, there are some notes which sound brighter and some sounds darker, even with the normal low B flat bell. So if I play the lowest fifth, some notes there I need to adjust more with either air pressure or with my embouchure or choosing a reed suitable for certain things to make them blend in more. And still you can hear some notes are a different tone color than others. So if I don't adjust anything and let the intonation go wherever it wants and let the tone colors just fly around, it will sound something like this. So then the B natural sticks out, low D is very sharp and uh, it doesn't sound very, uh, how do you say, it doesn't sound like one color anymore, it's more sticking out. The thing is, when you then change the bell for a low A bell, which I happen to have here. By the way, I also need to be careful when you put this on because there are two connections to connect this with. To the bass joint is both the B flat connection here and also there is a low A connection here, which is stretching all the way up to the A. And what happens is when you have a much longer instrument, not only does it become heavier and the whole balance of the instrument is different, but also uh, the bass joint especially is resonating very differently. So now if I would play from the low F and go down all the way, uh, all the way down to the A, you would hear that many of the notes have now changed timbre. So I do it again. I will not adjust anything. I will not try to make it beautiful. I just want to show how the instrument sounds without me trying to adjust anything. <laughs> If I don't adjust anything now, you realize that some notes have changed. What are those? Yeah, for example, low D, which normally with a normal bell is quite sharp, is now actually really nice in tune. It's flatter. However, now the intonation problem of the low D has moved to the low C. Super sharp, unless you adjust it. And then the very bright and nasal low B natural, which is normally, like I said, B, um, very nasal, is now much more round and dark. That's without me even doing anything about it. But the nasalness of the low B natural has now moved to the B flat. So only when you listen to the tone color, that sounds like a B natural, but it's actually the B flat. And then the roundness of the B flat, which normally you know have the whole instrument resonating, is now in the A. So this is changing quite a lot. And that is also a lot of the reason why uh, many bassoonists said you know that uh, the low A uh, bell is a um, is not really ideal. So when Wagner you know um, collaborated with uh, Heckel to to make a low A bell. The reason, also a lot of the reason why this didn't really work out was because of the fact if you really want the whole instrument to sound well in tune, well balanced and as if nothing has changed, then you need to actually adjust every tone hole accordingly. Because what Heckel did uh, when Wagner asked for the A was to just to give him a much longer bass joint, which I happen to have here, it looks something like this, uh, with just an extra hole for the low A. However, everything else on the bassoon is still the same, which doesn't work. <laughs> uh, so if you really want a bassoon that goes all the way down to low A without any difference at all uh, from a normal B flat bell, then we need a bassoon specially designed for only that purpose. Uh, which means if you would have such a bassoon and then put on the normal B flat bell, then that would sound out of tune. That's the only way to really make that work. And then of course you have, uh, not everyone has a low A flat a bell uh, that is sort of properly made. Many people just have the B flat bell and then they put the extension in there. There are many kinds of extensions, some looks better than others, but they sort of do the same job. And the low A is quite quite nice to play quite good in tune. You can 
also here is changing the timbre of the rest of the instrument here too. So if I would play again from low F and down without adjusting anything. Low B flat is hopeless. So of course with this extension you cannot play B flat because B flat becomes A and the low B natural is very bad. It sounds terrible, it's very difficult to play. But when you play it with the low A, uh, the normal low A bell, then it's much easier to play. And as I said, the tone colors are also completely different. So that is some of the main differences. And I think it's a little bit silly uh, the whole uh, Wagner Heckel situation where you know he only provided basically a new bell for the bassoon because he knew very well that to make this work he would need to redesign the whole instrument um, and I think it's also a bit pity then that, that very many bassoonists sort of gave up on the idea because there is nothing wrong with the A itself you know uh, you just need to <laughs> make a bassoon that works for it um, but then, yeah, for example, there are some benefits with playing on the low A bell. For example, if you ever have to play something very dark, uh, if you ever need a long uh, B natural and the lower register very long and um, very soft. I don't remember where that is. Is it in Tchaikovsky 5 or something? You just have a really long pianissimo or something. Then to play this with the low A bell is super easy. <laughs> Because it's a very, you know, dark and sort of stuffy tone to begin with. But when you play it on the low E flat bell, then it's a quite big challenge. And then how to get that, how to get such a bright nasal tone to become rounder and darker. Well, one thing is, you know, embouchure change. Another thing is you can mute a little bit with the low B flat key. Of course, if you do too much, then it becomes B flat. So you need to find a balance there. But yeah, so that is some of the tone color changes that comes with having a low A. It takes time to get used to, and of course you need to think. The resonance chamber, embouchure, air pressure are completely different on a low A bell than on the B flat bell. I hope that cleared up some of the, some of the questions about this. And then, of course, very important in the end, what happens if you put the A extension into the low A bell? You get a really flat G sharp. <laughs> very useful. Just to show, it is also possible to make a sort of a G sharp with a normal B flat bell as well. Sounds something like this. And if you wonder how that was done, then you can buy the book.